Uh, my name is Daniel Koenig, and I'm CEO of Zet Universe. We build visual collaboration software for tablets. Um, and to so, describe the product, I need to give a little introduction to how it all started. So, my team, we are all computer hackers, and at the same time, we're visual people. We like to draw, we like to work with visual information a lot. And we like to create some kind of impossible things. So, for example, when I was back an 18 years old guy, I had to Windows XP uh, to show uh, observational data inside Windows Shell, inside Windows Expo. Two years after that, Microsoft hired me as, and after that, they started to work on visual collaboration environment uh, to get these office labs. I guess some of you might have heard about that organization. They try to envision the future of uh, productivity. So, we almost created the uh, prototype and we created a few things, but then, well, one of the reasons why Steve Dahmer is leading company in about the last year is that he messed up with the vision of the company. <laughs> and, you know, a lot of visionary people actually left the company after that. Uh, one particular example is people who built Courier, the Microsoft tablet they left, and now they built paper app for iPad. So our team also left the company and we decided to build uh, that visual collaboration environment by our own uh, without uh, trying to rely on a big old company. Um, so the problem we're trying to solve is very simple. If you look at your computers, the way how we organize files into files, into folders, in hierarchies of folders, is really unnatural, especially for visual people. And you might be surprised by two thirds of the whole population of people, visual people. And they believe that this is the wrong way to work with files, especially when you look in tablets. This is what Microsoft provides you on your Windows tablet uh, up to Windows 8.1. In Windows 8.1, we have the screen on the right, and it's still work on nature. We decided to reinvent the way you work with it. So let me show you the demo what we built. Uh, and then we'll get uh, to the manifesto. So here is the demo. It's actually a living environment. In this environment, uh, you can organize your information uh, on a special way, visual way, how we call it. Uh, you can see the data is organized uh, into vis beautiful visual clusters. Uh, the space is uh, special and zoomable, and that means that you can see always the whole picture of all of the information that you organized on your device. This space works uh, ubiquitously. That means that it can work on different form factors from 8 inch tablets to big, big screens uh, like Microsoft's Pixel, uh, Pixel devices. And it, it, it can work with touch and it also can work with uh, mouse and keyboard. And we actually have a crazy video uh, of manipulating this space with Kinect, which is very, very easy to do. So the first thing is, as I said, it's very easy to browse through the space. The second the thing that is also very easy to do is to uh, organize information inside. So, for example, uh, let me go to one of the clusters, like the visual workspace you can see here, almost in the middle of the screen. And now I'm uh, managing and now uh, changing the position of things in the cluster. And L stop doing that for a moment. Uh, okay, so you can see that I'm organizing uh, things into the clusters, and that's very simple and it's very beautiful, and at the same time it's very flexible. So, but the funny thing is not stopping here. It's something I can open things from here. Oh, come on. Um, and when I open the thing, uh, oh, okay, it's a small screen resolution. I can open another thing like a document that should work just fine. Um, you like zoom in, and you like tap exactly to the content. And when you leave, uh, when you uh, leave the space, you get zoom out, like you get out from the space. And you get again to the position where you've been in the space before. So it's very easy to browse, it's very easy to organize, and it's very natural to open and close things. At the same time, it's also very easy to share. So this space is actually a limited type of Dropbox. And actually the reason I was saying to Al to stop doing few things is very simple. This space runs on both my computer and the computer in his hands. So while I was trying to organize files in the space, he was doing the same thing. So he was trying to reorganize the same space. And I'll try to do a few things with a virtual workspace, but like make it more beautiful, please. Uh, 
And the funny thing is you can create different spaces. So you can have a space for yourself, you can have a space for your team, or you can have a space with uh, your customers or with your partners. So as, um, as long as you want to organize information visually, you have options to work on your own or with people you want to work with. Uh, finally, uh, the thing that we're trying to reach is to build visual cooperation. Not just to organize, but to collaborate with the content. And for that, help. Thank you. Uh, let me show you the video here. Mm. Hope it will open. Yeah. Give me a check. Give me a second. Um. Should it go this way? No, that won't work. Okay. Um. Give me a second. As I said, it works on top of Dropbox, so in case you want to work with Dropbox, you can also uh, go to a folder and go to the content itself, like you would do in a typical way. Uh, here you can see I'm hacking this item uh, to get access to that video, and I will open the video with all the all means in there. Okay, so here you can see. Uh, that my computers are moving all around the space and they uh, manipulate this content and they can share different content uh, comments on top of that space. Uh, and that is the way how we see the visual cooperation inside our space. Well, so all in all, we believe in a few simple things. We believe that every information system in the world where we have tablets, where we have all the connect things and so on, should be visual. And the second thing that we believe that in every information system, the most important value is not just in things, historical documents, but also the links between them. And they are very, very important to be stored in the system. And the third thing, every system should be a contextual abhor, which means it should adopt a different kind of changes. So our system is an example of that. Uh, it helps you to visually organize information. Uh, it is able to connect to preserve data between different things, and it is live. So whatever is changing in the system is uh, it's, You can see those changes in the visual uh, interface of our system. So with that, welcome to ask questions. can work with this kind of system. Uh, particularly we've got a lot of interest from people like from the filming industry, uh, from design, from manufacturing, and so on. Everywhere where people who work are visual, and they want to be on the same page, not just in textual form, but in visual form. So I can give an example if you don't mind. Uh, you have a small production company, and they have a great movie. And they don't have all the people inside the company, they have different kinds of people working in different organizations, usually it's up to five to seven different parties. And they need to work on a script, on a video. And traditionally, if they go to Google Docs, or they go to Dropbox on its own, and all they see is a file, they don't know who is working the file. They can't visually say, hey, please change these words in the document, or please change this part of the video to do this, or to do that kind of thing. And they usually go make a conference call, they call each other, they talk, and 90% of every conference call is just about nothing and object because they can't really explain in words what they want to do. But when they have a visual space, uh, they can just show with an icon where they want to do the change. And with the text, they can say what they want to do, what kind of change uh, it should be done with it part of the system. So that's uh, one of the use cases uh, we have for us. Okay. Looks like this was uh, kind of the install of Windows shell, if you will. Yep. Looked at any other OSs? Certainly. Uh, we're looking forward to build uh, the same user experience uh, for iOS, for Mac OS X, and for Android. I think Blackberry is nothing interesting now. But. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. In, in, in the separate like small classes, they will file the two files, you know, and, and when, when you have had your same file system for years, usually it's, it's much more nightmarish than that. So, uh, like, I, I was a little surprised by the fact that you said that 
you try to stay away from the idea of hierarchy when, when the idea of hierarchy is a way to try to cope with the complexity by helping you focus on a few connections at each level and right. not on, on the entire space. So, like, uh, what's the maximum number of files that a user can handle? So, I can give you an example. Uh, but first of all, I have a question here. I guess all of us here are geeks, so most of you might possibly play games like Doom or Warcraft or World of Warcraft or something like that. Please uh, raise your hand if you play any kind of strategic real time games. Okay, so here's an example of our previous demo, previous prototype, uh, and we had a thing called Minimap. In all those real time strategic games, you have this Minimap thing by default. So here you can see Minimap for 3,000 things that I've added to my previous version of that universe uh, over the course of one and a half year. And it was pretty easy to manipulate with all the data by using Minimap. You can think of Minimap like a different representation of the hierarchy in one of the explorer on the left bar, on the left side of it. But uh, unlike the hierarchical menu in your Windows Explorer, in the Minimap, you can see the whole picture at the same time. And because our special memory is uh, working more in a more natural way, we remember things automatically. You don't have to remember where we put things. That happens automatically in our mind. Uh, it's very easy to jump into different parts of the space. You do it uh, very much naturally, intuitively. And uh, you can jump very, very fast between different things. So it works for 3,000 things, for example. Answering that question. Any more questions? Uh, pardon? Organizing the website, so it's a different, instead of a menu system with web and things, you can see people converting old file structures that are currently on the web okay. to the organizational system. Is that what other map kind of areas would you expand into? Well, that's a very interesting question. Uh, in the demo, uh, the previous demo, we had a way to save web pages into our system and then show them in those kind of uh, but the idea, the biggest idea behind the space, behind the system, is that that is a space of your own knowledge, of your own information, or something that really makes sense to you. So, this visualization is doing everything for you to be able to quickly put things, and organize the way you want, and then to come back to that stuff very, very fast. So, that's what it's all about. If you try to apply it to the website, then the visualization will be automatic and it will uh, lose a half of its value for the user. More, any more questions? Join Boston New Technology Meetup, sponsor an event or venue, present your idea, and attend to network with Boston's brightest. Details are at www.bostonnewtech.org and in the video description.